Okay. So, we have discussed about that criteria based assessment systems and we have said that that assess criteria based assessment system for uh, 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 summative assessment and then we have given that example of norm reference and criteria reference. Now, we go for the formative assessment. In formative assessment basically used for diagnostic analysis of the student misconceptions. So, if you see that any kind of format formative assessment is required in periodic, see the periodic assessment that means formative assessment. Suppose you define your course outcome, now during the teaching learning process the students are achieving one outcome at a time. So, they have suppose you have a 6 or 7 outcome course, then you have a module outcome, lecture outcome, all outcomes are written down. Then you have to say test whether the student has attained those outcomes or not. Periodically, I have to test whether they have reached uh, uh, understand the first uh, module 1 outcome or not, then course uh, maybe the course objective 1 is related to the module 1. So, whether the module 1 after completion of the module 1, whether they understand the course level outcome or not. So, that kind of test we have to perform periodically uh, during the uh, during the teaching learning process and that process is called formative evaluation. This may be diagnostic, so formative evaluation may be may need the diagnostic assessment also. So, as I said the purpose of the assessment is to find out whether the student achieve the intended skill or not. So, periodically suppose you thought the students are achieved the skill and the end of the semester you find none of the student is achieved those skill. So, at, at the time is gone, so that time there is no remedial lesson can be provided to the students. So, instead of doing that I can take the formative assessment for each and every outcome during the teaching learning process that means that it is periodic and that may be a diagnostics. What do you mean by diagnostics? That the purpose of this test is to find out their misconception regarding the topic. I can give a simple example. Suppose if I taught, a, let's I have taught, uh, given a simple example, which is very simple, uh, even if it is primary level, maybe in, uh, not in class five level. Two to the power three is equal to what? So you want to your outcome is that students should know a to the power b calculation, what is the value decimal value that kind of things you want to talk. So, 2 to the power 3 correct answer is 8. Okay. Now, if I design a formative assessment and what are the misconception as a teacher I know, so, if I give 2 to the power 3 the student misconception is either they can add this two number 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 or they can multiply these two number or they can give the correct answer. This is the three three are possible. So, both I have to <coughs> now after the class suppose I have a I taken one hour class let us one hour lectures and you said that within this one hour students should achieve this outcome 1, 2 and 3 let us 3 is the your lecture outcome. Just before the end of the, the 5 minutes of the lecture you should spend to test whether the student has achieved that outcome or not. Now, teacher may say that I have a 400 students, how can I test whether the student has achieved the outcome or not? There is a one problem, 400 students in my class, so I am unable to test whether the student has achieved the outcome or not. How do I test it? Now, that is possible, we are developing that software, let us, let us the I have a uh, uh, multiple choice question answering soft, uh, software where or you everybody know the clicker technology or some other uh, multiple choice answer kind of uh, technology is there. Now, as a teacher I create a question paper which is multiple choice, but the all choice are not arbitrary. There is a correct answer and there will be a choice which related to a possible misconception. So, if I say 2 to the power 3, the choice is not 8, 7, 6, 5. I have to give the choice 6, 7, 8 over 2 to the power 3 means one choice is maybe adding the two number 5, another choice is multiplying two number 6, another choice is 8. So, if a students, so I make that question 
to all 400 students from my laptop and everybody likes there is a smartphone or there may be a everybody has a mobile phone now a student so give the give the answer once they click the answer choice a let like that is 5 then you know what is their misconception then you can whether they have by chance give this answer or not you can again make a question paper which is less 3 to the power 5 then give the choice again he have given the question answer is 8 that means you are ensure that his misconception is he is adding these two number now you identify those students with the roll number you know and you call them that since you have uh, you have a misconception like this so please read this material to overcome this misconception so i can i can design a diagnostic test based formative assessment system which can be used for formative assessment of the students to test whether they achieve the skill and if they does not achieve the skill what is their misconception but the role of the teacher is very important what is the role of the teacher to design a question paper and find out what should be the possible misconception of this question paper so testing a student you are asking a question to the student is not to that, that I they embarrass the students you are asking a question to the students to find out what is the possible misconception of the students. So, to do that today ICT can help greatly to find out the possible misconception and provide their remedial lesson this can be done even right now that if, if many, many people know the modules, modules can be used to find out the misconception, but that is not diagnostics we are developing one software which will be diagnostic test bed formative assess assessment so that as a teacher I can find out what is the miscons possible misconception of the student. Okay. Now, there is a another question is come there is called item analysis many of you know the assessment the suppose I want to make a question I test item analysis test item analysis question test item whatever I have make the question paper I want to analyze whether this questions is appropriate to the students or not. So, what I said if it is criteria based then question paper will be designed based on the criteria what I want to test it is already communicate to the students and I will test only that things that is called criteria based. So, once I design the criteria based test item let us I want to find out the test item analysis that whether this test item is suitable for finding out the skill of the students or not. Now, there is a test item analysis there is a different component one is called facilitation value. What do you mean by facilitation value that is how easy is that question. So, I design a question and I want to test how easy is this question. How do I test it? It is it is not that I can test it for the present students. So, suppose this type of question paper I have already defined a design and I have the result of the previous less 10 years students result. From that result I can find out what is the facilitation value of this type of question paper means how easy it is how we do it let us I have a students of 40 students in my class I make a test item and I test take the test out of 40 students all students give the correct answer which I intended if it is criteria based my purpose is solved all students know the skill, but if I want to say that rank the students then all students if give the answer I cannot rank them 1 to 100. So, facilitation value is that question paper is how easy it is if all the students give the correct answer that means everybody give the correct answer facilitation value is 1 facilitation value is 1 everybody gives the correct answer 
I make a test item where out of 40 students, none of them give the answer. That means, facilitation value is 0, none of the students can give the answer. So, facilitation value is 0. So, now, if I have a question paper of 40 questions and all students give that correct answer, then the facilitation value is 1 fb and if none of the student can give the correct answer, facilitation value is 0. So, fb varies from 1 to 0. Now, in between value, how do I find out? So, suppose I have a 40 students, if you see this, I have 40 students, 40 students, let us talk about multiple choice question first, then I come to the summative type question paper. So, let us, I have a 10 questions, 1, 2, 3, 4, 20 questions I have and the correct, there is a multiple choice questions, there is a fourth choice A, B, C, D and correct answer is C. Now, out of 40 students, let us test item 1, I found some of the student choice is B, some of them are C, some of them are A, all kind of things are there. So, now, after taking the test, let us, I rank the students that I know that those are the students, I take the, so 20, 20 test item is there, I take the test and then I find out the based on the total score, I rank the students. Somebody get 18, let us, every question is 1 marks, somebody is 17, somebody is 16, so I rank them 1 to 40. So, once I rank them 1 to 40, then there is a, you know, everybody knows that first person are the good students and last, last person are the bad students who not perform well. So, generally the marks distribution of the students should be a Gaussian marks, Gaussian distribution, marks of the student should follow a Gaussian distribution. Everybody know what is half power down, 3 dB down, what do you mean by 3 dB? Is 27 percent. 27 percent is the 3 dB. So, if I say those are the highest highest marks and this is the low, low, low students. So, this is 1, this is 40 rank students. So, if I rank them and up to this person, this person is called upper group and this person is called lower group. Okay. So, if I want to find out how easy is this question? Let us test item 1. I have to know how many students of upper group give the correct answer and how many students of the lower group give the correct answer, ok or not. So, now if it is 27 percent, so 40 students roughly if I say 8 students is come, 40 students means or if it is 30 students, oh here is 30 students. So, if it is 30 students, if I have a 30 students, then roughly 8 students is the upper group and 8 student is the lower group. If it is 40 students, so you will find out how many students is the upper group and how many students is the lower group. So, let us 30 students, then 8 student is in upper group, 8 student is in lower group. Okay. I said the facilitation value F B is how many students of the upper group give the correct answer and uh, how many students of the lower group give the correct answer and divided by the group size is clear or not. So, if I say out for test item 1 out of upper 8 students only 7 students give the correct answer and for the lower group I found 1 student give the correct answer C. So, one student give the correct answer divided the group size 8 plus 8. So, it is 8 by 16. So, it is 0 0.5. So, facilitation value of the test item 1 is 0 0.5. It is clear or not? I said if I want to find out the facilitation value of a test item, I have a class size and rank them after the taking the test. I rank them 1 to 
100 or maybe 1 to 40, 1 to 400. Then I take the upper group and lower group, upper 30 percent of the students and lower 30 percent of the students. How many students of the upper group give the correct answer plus how many students of the lower group give the correct answer divided by the group size if each test is each, um, uh, each test item is uh, uh, test item is corresponding to one marks. Is clear? Clear? So, facilitation value is 0 0.5 in test item 1. Now, similarly, if I see the test item number 2, correct answer is A. How many upper group is up to 8 is 1 upper group student give the correct answer? Sorry, 7 upper group student give the correct answer and 7 lower group student give the correct answer. 7 plus 7 divided by 16, so 14 by 16, almost 1, close to 1. So, that means, test item 2 is very easy, even the lower group student can give the answer, is clear. But in our cases, since it is criteria based assessment system, this kind of test item analysis is not that much required because I want to test whether the student achieve the skill or not. But if I want to assign them a rank, then I have to do the test item analysis and I have to design the question paper such that I can rank the students 1 to 40. Okay. So, that is called facilitation value. Similarly, let us instead of one marks multiple choice question, suppose I have a question paper which let us there is a 7 question in the paper, each question has 15 marks, each question is 15 marks. So, let us 7 into or I can say I have a 7 question, question number 1 is 15 marks, question number 2 is maybe 12 marks, 3 is maybe 10 marks like that and within 7 question I have a total 100 marks question paper. Is okay or not? Okay. So, 100 marks question paper. So, now question number 1, 15 is the highest. So, within the 100 marks question paper, first after the test, I rank them, rank the student 1 to 30. 1, 2, 3, 2, 30. Now, I find the question for question number 1, the upper group is up to 8, and question number 1, lower group is 27 to 30. So, I will sum up the total marks of the upper group. What is total marks? Question paper full uh, 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 marks obtained by the individual students of the upper group. So, sum up upper group marks plus sum up lower group marks divided by total marks in upper group 8 into 15 plus 8 into 15. So, Generalized formula is that if the question, question marks is A, let the marks of the question is A and upper group student sum, sum of upper group student marks plus sum of lower group student marks divided by 16 into full marks of the question paper is the facilitation value. Okay. This is the facilitation value. So, I can generalize in theory, the facilitation value is nothing but a total right answer by upper group plus total right answer by lower group or L, L, R L divided by 2 into group size n. Okay. If it is multiple one marks question paper, if it is summative question paper, then I just only multiply sum the upper group marks, sum the lower group marks divided by n 2 into n into full marks of the question paper. Yeah. So, if I give you the data for any test item, then you can easily calculate what is the facilitation value of the test item. In assignment, I will supply some data and you will solve calculate the facilitation value of those test item. Is clear? So, this is the called facilitation value. Then, 
there is another another terminology we will call discriminative index discriminative index how good is the test item to differentiate between the good students and bad students so if i say I am designing a question paper for JE. My discriminating index value of that question should be very high, so that only top students can answer that question and lower, lower students cannot answer that question, so that I can choose the good students from the large pool of students. If I give the facility discriminating index very low question paper, all everybody is give the answer the, 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 the that question does not create any value to the je question because je is the norm reference examination so suppose I, in je there is a one question everybody 5 lakh student everybody give the correct answer what is the value of that question no value because using that question i cannot differentiate the good student to bad student because je exam is only find out the good student from the among 5 lakh students who are the top good student who are the uh, less top and like that we have to rank them ok. So, discriminating index is nothing but a how good is my test item so that it can differentiate between the good students and bad students ok. Now, same things if I say I, I take a test for less 30 students and again I found less item number 1 correct answer is C and upper group students give the correct upper group all 7 student of the upper group give the correct answer and 1 student give the wrong answer in the correct answer in the lower group student. So, I said how good it is differentiate between the upper group and lower group. So, that means, correct answer given by upper group minus correct answer given by lower group divided by the group size that means, that is equal to d i. How good is the question paper to differentiate between the good students and bad students? That means, the correct answer the number of students give the correct answer of the upper group number of students give the uh, correct answer in the lower group minus divided by n. So, in case of I question number 1 in this example I can say the 7 students of the upper group give the correct answer only 1 students of the lower group give the correct answer and divided by group size is 8. So, it is 6 by 8 is the d i ok. So, discriminating index is nothing but a 7 minus 1 by 8. Similarly, if it is summative type question paper, if it is a long long answer question instead of multiple choice, let us my question number 1 highest marks is 15. Then the sum of the upper group students, sum of the marks of the upper group students minus sum of the marks of the lower group student divided by the total marks n into 15 is ok or not. I will upload this PowerPoint presentation where some something is cal already calculated you can go through it, but you have to understand the theory first that what this what do you mean by discriminative index. Now, you see if the facilitation value is 1 what should be the d i all students are give the correct answer that means, facilitation value f b f b is equal to 1. So, d i will be upper group correct minus upper group lower group correct divided by correct is equal to 0 discriminating index is 0. So, that means, if I provide a question paper in case of a ranking the student and every student give the correct answer that question does not use or does does not have any effect on the ranking of the students. So, I, I should not use that type of questions to ranking the students, but yes I will use that type of questions if it is criteria based evaluation I want to test whether the student achieve this skill or not in case of our semester examination 
I should provide the question paper which can every student give the correct answer because every I want to test the criteria not the discriminating them to provide the rank. Okay. So, I can use this kind of formula to test the test that item which is called item analysis to find out the hardness and how easy is the question paper from the previous year data set. Okay. So, there is a lot of workout problem. If I see that the, this the, the, this group that item number 1 effectiveness of this, uh, the discriminative uh, index facilitation value is 0 0.5 and discriminative index is 0 0.75, 6 by 8. Okay. So, some workout problems are already there. You can go through this uh, uh, slides and see that uh, discriminative value and facilitation value. Now, there is another point is called effectiveness of the destructor. Designing of multiple choice question paper is not that so easy. When you design a multiple choice question paper and if you have a four choice, the choice is not arbitrary. Even I seen that my daughter is preparing for Olympiad exam in maths and I found he is giving that choosing the correct answer of a three digit number multiplied by a three digit number within a fraction of second. Then I ask how do you select the correct answer without doing the multiplication? He said it is very simple. If you see the four choice, let us there is a given a number whose last digit is 5 and the another three digit number whose last digit is 5. So, he said that what should be the result last digit will be the 5. Now, if you see the four choice only one answer has the last digit 5. So, obviously, that will be the correct answer. So, if I say I want to test whether a student is able to multiply a three digit number by a three digit number using multiple choice questions and I give this kind of option then without doing the multiplication or without doing the correct multiplication of three digit number students can give the correct answer. Then my purpose of the evaluation is totally lost. If you see many many of the cases that our JE exam all our coaching center are try to do this this only they want to prepare the students how how good are they using minimum time can find out the correct answer or they can reject the wrong answer so that they can distinguish the correct answer so that is mechanized practice and mechanized this doesn't test the student deep knowledge or deep understanding about the subject so, this does not develop the skill set of the students. This kind of mechanism is used in a training. You see that all JE coaching center, several tests they have taken and several kinds of tests they have taken to only facilitate the students how do you select that answer quickly. So, if I want to really design a very good multiple choice questions, my each of the choice should not be arbitrary. So, suppose if I want to design a multiple choice option for 2 to the power 3, what are the possible misconceptions I have to find out? Misconception 1 is 5 adding the number, 2 is multiplying the number 6 and 3 is correct. So, only 3 options are there. So, choice should be only 3. Out of 3, if anybody choose option 1, I know his misconception is he is adding the two number. So, purpose of the evaluation is to find out whether the student has that skill or not. If I want to find out, so I have to know what are the possible misconception if I this 
गिव दिस काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन पेपर सो इफ आई टू टू दिपर थ्री एंड आई गिव ए चॉइस इज हंड्रेड टू हंड्रेड एंड एट दे नॉन ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स और लेस हंड्रेड सिक्स एंड एट नॉन ऑफ द स्टूडेंट चूज दिस टू हंड्रेड ऑप्शन टू हंड्रेड वट इज द मीनिंग द इफेक्टिवनेस ऑफ द डिस्ट्रक्टर सो चॉइस ऑफ द डिस्ट्रक्टर ईच एंड इंडिविजुअल चॉइस ऑफ द डिस्ट्रक्टर सो सो दैट दे स्टूडेंट आई वॉन्ट टेस्ट द मिसकनसेप्शन ऑफ द स्टूडेंट सो इफ द डिस्ट्रक्टर चॉइस इज जीरो नॉन ऑफ द स्टूडेंट इज चूज द डिस्ट्रक्टर टू दैट द इफेक्टिवनेस ऑफ द डिस्ट्रक्टर टू डिस्ट्रक्टर टू इज जीरो so whether i give that choice or not doesn't matter so the effective number of this factor is that how effective is each of the choices so effective number of this factor in mathematics i can say number of student of the lower group choose that this factor minus number of students of the upper group choose the this factor divided by the n so if i say question number 1 i have a four choice a b c d c is the correct answer so a b and d are the possible distractor now if you see none of the student is choose d as a distractor that means that effective neighbors of the distractor choice d is zero so effectiveness of the distractor a is how much number of students of the lower group choose a how many student choose a nobody nobody choose a minus number of students of the upper group choose a only one divided by the n effectiveness of the distractor choice b number of student of the lower group choose b 1 2 3 4 5 Six, seven. So seven minus upper group student. How many? None. Seven minus zero divided by eight. So B is the good distractor from the item analysis item number one. So designing a multiple choice question paper is not that easy. Each of the choice should be test the possible. misconception of the students okay so effectiveness of the distractor how to calculate how to calculate facilitation value how to calculate discriminative index i have covered in this class next class i will say how to design or there is another one guessing problem and then i go for to go, to, uh, go to the the validity and reliability of the evaluation okay thank you